Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Dan Hudson Baseball Diamond, <coughs> where today is a big senior night game for your Hazen Wildcats as they will take on the Linden Institute Vikings, who I believe sit atop of Division Two, and they are quite, quite good. Uh, I'll quickly go over the defense for the Hazen Wildcats. Montgomery is behind the plate. Gould is at first. Uh, Davison's at second. Andrew Menard is at third. Lyle Rooney is at shortstop. Left field, we have Jess Zendik. Center field, we have Jaden Baker. And in right field, we have Fenton Meyer. And pitching is Tyler Rivard. And I'll take a quick second <coughs> to thank our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522, we support Hazen Athletics. And DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. And as always, folks, I'm James Selvis, and joining me today is Mike Baker. How are you, Mike? Hey, I'm great, James. How are you doing this beautiful day? Not bad, Mike. It is another great day for baseball. It is, it is, and Hazen playing a tough Linden Institute team, as, as you said, James, sitting atop of Division Two, um, a very key game for both teams as far as seeding with the upcoming playoffs, so. It is. Hopefully we're in for a good one here. Hazen lost a tough one to Thetford on Tuesday night. They did, and uh, it was uh, Hazen, um, Bellows Falls, and Peoples, three of the top four teams in Division Three, all lost the other night, which Leaves Hazen still in first place at 12 and two. Bellows Falls in second, 11 and four. Thetford Academy third at nine and three, and Peoples in fourth, 10 and two. And Green Mountain also making a good run in fifth at 10 and four. So a lot of good teams on top of Division three. So we're getting ready to get underway here. Revard, first pitch is inside for a ball as Cam Berry stands in for the Vikings. Cam Berry the. Right fielder today. As Rivard making the start today. That's and right down the middle for a strike. Two balls and a strike now to Barry. And of course the Barry name, very synonymous in the Linden area. As sure having is. many good athletes from that family. Sure is. I believe his dad, Eric Barry, great athlete. Also owner of uh, Northeast Sports Network. Yeah, and his dad is a Hall of Famer actually at uh, Northern Vermont University Linden for basketball. Yes, uh, really a, a sports family for sure. Sure is. That's down, nice block there by Montgomery. Full count now to Barry. Rivard winds and fires. And Barry will foul that one back to the fence here. Barry doing a good job there to protect with the full count. Rivard now kicks and fires. That's just right. low for a ball. Look good though, Mike. Wow, just missing on that. Looked, sure was. Looked really good. Looked good, but it'll be a first uh, batter walk by Tyler Rivard, so Barry will be at first. And Barry likely has some good speed over there, so we'll see what Lyndon decides to do here. Sure does. Austin Wheeler stands in now, the right fielder. And that's fouled off by Wheeler. And Wheeler, a, a great baseball player. I've got to see him since he was younger, probably back in fifth and sixth grade throughout All-Stars when I coached the Hardwick teams. A really solid baseball player. You said he's a pretty good pitcher too, isn't he, Mike? He, yes, yeah. Snap uh, pickoff throw to first base by Rivard. Barry dives in safe. Uh, did Rooney pitch Tuesday night? Rooney did pitch over at Thetford. So yep. that's probably why Rivard is getting the start on the mound. Yes. And Barry in, in motion. A little bit of a high throw there by Montgomery. Not something you see often from him, Mike. Usually his throws are pretty accurate behind the dish. Yep, James is really pretty solid back there. Sure is. That's fouled off by Wheeler. And Linden with a runner in scoring position already. It'll Aza. be a, I'll yeah, go ahead, James. It'll be a ball and a strike. 
Yes, like you said, Mike, runner in scoring position already. So trying to put the pressure on Rivard in the Wildcat defense. Rivard winds and fires. That's low. Nice stop behind home plate by Montgomery. Really was. As you said, Barry has very good speed, so seeing him in motion is not a very uncommon thing. Rivard now from the set. He'll fire. That's hit hard on the ground. Davison, he'll fire to first base and get him. So they get the out at first base, but Tyson Davison will move up 90 feet to or Canberra will move up 90 feet to third base. It was Tyson Davison that made the out to yep. first base. Yeah, and a good piece of hitting by Wheeler. Even though he didn't get on base, he advanced the runner to third. So Sure did. Even with an out, a good piece of hitting by Barry. As Luke, or excuse me, by Wheeler. Yes, as Luke Dudas stands in now for the Vikings. Low for a ball on the first pitch by Rivard. Rivard winds and fires. That's in there for a strike. So one ball, one strike, one out for the Wildcats. Over the years I've seen Dudas hit with some really good power, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, Dudas seems like a very big power bat at the plate. Another nice stop by Montgomery behind home plate. Yeah, he's really doing a great job in there. He is preventing the runner from going. Two balls and a strike now. Rivard from the set, he'll wind and fire. That's low for a ball, three and one. That one got away, but Montgomery did a good job to corral that one quickly. Dudas is, uh, Dudas is waiting for one to hit. Oh, and he fouled that one back off Montgomery. So the count runs full. Rivard really looking for a strikeout here to get the second out of the inning. He sure is. And he got it, Mike. Yes. Rivard will get the much needed swing and miss. So yeah. two down now with a runner at third base. Went with the fastball there and able to get it by Dudas. And Trevor Lucier stands in now. And he is catching today for the Vikings. He is. First pitch from Rivard is a ball. That's fouled back to the fence. One ball, one strike. Now. A little windy today, Mike, but Boy, I was, just, I was just thinking it's a tough wind today. It's going to be hard. Pop-ups and fly balls have potential to be hard out there. Yes. That's a little high there for a ball. Two and one now to Lucier from Rivard, who is another hard thrower for the Wildcats. And swing and a miss. Two and two. Nice pitch there by Rivard. Yeah, able to get the high fastball by him. Yes. Rivard now, he'll wind and fire. And that's cranked out towards center field. And like you said, Mike, that wind not doing the Wildcat defense any favors as Barry scores. And Lucier moves into second base with a two out RBI double. So that puts the Vikings up one nothing. Yeah, good piece of hitting there, right in the gap between left and center fielder. Yes, as Dylan Miller is going to stand in now. Looks like Rebard made a pretty good pitch there, but just hung it a little bit, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well hit ball. It is. It was. And Miller playing third base today for Linden. That's high for a ball. Rivard going to try and battle back here. Rivard winds and fires. That one's hit hard towards right field. And Meyer puts that one away out in right field. No problem. So that'll do it. I'll take a quick second to read our sponsors here today. We have Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and a DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. 
and we are back, folks, here at the Dan Hudson Baseball Field. So in the top half of the inning, the Linden Vikings pushed across the run, so the Wildcat Bats got to answer now as Davison will stand in to lead off. I was uh, talking with Tyson's mom earlier today. Very emotional day for parents on their kids' seniors day. And I definitely yep. know that feeling going through it last year. For sure. As Steen on the mound, he'll wind and fire. That's high for a ball, 2-0 to start Davison. Yeah, very true. You're going to have to go through it again uh, next year, too. Oh, Mike. yes, yeah. Happens too quickly. Steen now from the set. He'll wind and fire. That's high for a ball, 3-0. and oh. Davison doing a good job of uh, not swinging at those high pitches. As you said, Mike, it is very hard to lay off those high pitches. You mentioned that last game, and I agree. Steen will wind and fire. Davison, no problem at all with him taking that one there, Mike. 3-0, you're probably not going to be swinging. No, he squared to bun a little bit to see if see if he could get um, ball four, but he had no intention of swinging at that. No. Well, took a big cut at that one, and now the count's quickly full for Steen, who seems like he throws pretty hard on the mound he for does. the Vikings. He does, he does. Two good hard-throwing pitchers today. Steen winds and fires. And that's hit hard by Davison, a single up the middle. So Davison gets the Hazen offense going early with a quick knock. Yep. Really ripped up the middle by Davison. Did hit that hard. Davison is as good as they come in the leadoff spot. Good to have some bases or some speed on the bases for Hazen. Sure is. They like to run. Revard stands in now, the pitcher today, and the big bat. And they pick off Tyson Davison. So, so there goes that. There goes that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Good, good move by their pitcher there. Sure did. Davison had a dangerous lead, and pitcher made a nice move, and Tyson didn't even see it. Yeah, good play by Steer there. Steen. Steen. First pitch to Revard in there for a strike. Some point I'll be able to read my own writing. <laughs> yeah, your handwriting's pretty good, Mike. A lot better than mine. Steen winds and fires. And Revard hits that one up the middle, and that'll be a base hit. So back-to-back -back base hits for the Wildcats, but Davison was picked off trying to run to second base. Yeah, good piece of hitting by Tyler, finding the hole up the middle. Yep. Not hit hard, but perfect spot. Yep, and now another good bat for the Wildcats as James Montgomery stands in. Hey, nice job, Winnie. Nice pickoff. Their pitcher has a very nice yeah. pickoff move. Yeah, Steen's already looking like he has one of the best moves to first that we've seen this year. I think so. Really has a quick move. Tyler with a big lead again now. Would not be surprised to see Steen throw one over again. But Revard on the move. He dives into second base safe. Nice job by Revard there to swipe second. Was uh, not surprised to see him in motion there, Mike. No, that was a good throw down for Lindenville, but great jump by Revard and good slide to get in there. It was. Looked like a good throw. I thought he might have got Revard it. At first, that's hit hard and that's through. They're gonna hold. They're going to hold Revard at third base, probably a good idea. Nice base hit through the right side for Montgomery to move up uh, Revard 90 feet. Now we got runners on the corners. Uh, nice job with Montgomery going with the outside pitch. And the nice power bat, the cleanup hitter, Mike, your son, the butcher, the baker, the home run maker, Jaden <laughs> Baker. Stand in. Lance, I'll use it since you're not here too. Uh, Jaden looking for a big hit. Here. Sure is. Montgomery on the move. And he dives into second safe. No dive needed though, as there was no throw down. I think the catcher just mishandled it a little bit behind the plate, so he wasn't going to be able to get 
Montgomery in motion. Yeah, Montgomery with good speed and a runner on third also, so. It is. No throw down. That's one thing too, Mike, they put a lot of pressure on these, uh, on the pitchers and the catchers by having a lot of runners in motion. Yeah, they really do. So now runners at second and third as it's a 1-1 count now to Baker. One out in the bottom of the second, uh, bottom of the first. Steen now, back on the windup, he'll fire. Big swing and a miss by Baker. One ball, two strikes. Baker wanted every piece of that one, Mike. Yeah, a little bit, little bit too hard of a swing there, but hopefully cut the swing down on this one to put it in play. I agree. Steen now will wind and fire. And unfortunately, Mike, uh, Jaden has a pair of shoes at the plate on that one. Yep. Um, that is unfortunate with runners at second and third. Sure is. Now Lyle Rooney, who is a good hitter in his own right, Mike, will stand dead. Lyle had a really good hitting game the last game. Certainly did. Nice pitch, Rick. Looked like a breaking ball there. First pitch to kind of throw Lyle off a little bit. Did you hear the Hazen faithful trying to get going? There is, there is. It's good to hear. It is? There's the strike. Steen, yeah. like we said, Mike, has looked pretty good on the mound he so far. Throws hard, and he can really paint the corners. That's high for a ball. One ball, two strikes, two outs. As yes, Lyle is probably not going to see much time on the mound today, Mike. As I heard, he went seven at that first. Yeah, he, he won't. You won't see him today. No, because Tyler Tyler only pitched one one inning. Uh, drop third strike, but Rooney is out. So Hazen gets some runners on base, but they'll leave two. I'll take a second and read our sponsors now. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports four seven two five five two two. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. And we are back, folks. Like I said, here at Dan Hudson Baseball Field on the campus of Hazen Union High School in Hardwick, Vermont. Been a barn burner so far, Mike. Sure has. I don't know if that's really a term for baseball. First pitch ball by Reaver. Yep, Mason, their shortstop at bat here. Yep. That's fouled back by Mason. It has been very, very windy today, Mike. It is. Wind seems to be blowing in a little bit here. Yep. Oof, that no. looked good. Yep, just missing. Two balls and a strike now by Revard to Wyatt Mason. Who is their shortstop? Low for a ball, and that'll be three and one. Three balls and a strike. To Mason. There's the strike, so it'll be a full count now. Nice pitch there by Rivard. Rivard now will wind and deliver. And swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Rivard. He'll pick up strikeout number two on the day. Yeah, good fastball from Rivard there. It is. Like I said, both pitchers today throwing heat on the mound. I don't think Rivard has quite as much zip as Rooney does, but... But he still throws hard, nonetheless. Both of them hard throwers for sure. Yes, as Carson McQuaid stands in now. First pitch strike by Rivard. As Tyler's dad, Joe Rivard, one of the assistant coaches for Hazen. Swing and a miss there. Nice pitch by Rivard along with Opie Upson. They both assist Spencer Howard. Yeah. Solid coaching staff for Hazen over there. Very good. And back-to-back -back Ks for Rivard. Three pitches, three strikes. 
on that one. Looked like Rivard uh, came to play this inning, Mike. He really looks solid out there. Throwing strikes, going right after the hitters. That's what you like to see from your starter. And that's fouled away by Bandy. Number 31. Swing and a miss there by Bandy. He's their left fielder. And swing and a miss. So oh, Rivard will strike out the side in the top half of the inning. We head to the bottom half of the inning, folks. One nothing lead for the Vikings. I'll take a second. Read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. And welcome back to Hudson Field. We start the bottom of the second inning with Jazz Zendik, our left fielder up. And a chopper to third base. And the throw pulls the first baseman off and good hustle by Zendik to get down the line. So again, Hazen gets the leadoff man on to start the inning. And just a beautiful day here at Hudson Field. Great crowd um, for the local Hazen fans um, coming out on senior day to support their team. And Linden also bringing a lot of people over here. Um, one of the best crowds we've seen this year. And Andrew Menard now at the plate. Oh, very true, Mike. And that's ripped into left field, a base hit. Oh, through the left fielder's legs. Howard's going to send yeah. Zendik. Zendik around third. He will cross home plate, and this game is tied, Mike. Just like that, Andrew the Mahler Menard is going to have an RBI double. Good, good poke out there by Menard. Very good poke. Menard hit every stitch of that baseball. And good aggressive base running by Zendik after the ball went through the left fielder's legs. He was on his horse and able to score on that. And Wyatt Flanders into hit now. And Wyatt, of course, one of Hazen seniors that was celebrated today during the pregame ceremonies. Yes, Zendik who just scored another one of the seniors. Now stalls in there for a strike. And Steen is, or now, Steen, I'm sorry. Steen is now trying to shake things off and go after Flanders. Much like Rivard had to in the first inning. Yeah, same thing. Flanders swings and misses. I would two now to him. Flanders a very good outfielder for the, uh, the Wildcats. He is, he's played a lot of good right field over the years. He has, but he'll go down swinging there, but. That'll only be the first out for the Hazen Wildcats. A 1-1 one -one tie with a runner at second base. Gould, Aisha Gould, one of the other seniors. And Aisha really having a solid season. He's playing good defense at first base and really hitting the ball well. He is. That's low for a ball, first pitch by Steen. Just all in all, Gould, an all around pretty good athlete. He is, he is. Good basketball player as well. So fun story about Aisha as he took up golf recently and played on the golf team. Yep. He was actually got two hole in ones in, in two days. Yeah. It took me over 20 years to get two and he, he did it in back to back days. It was pretty impressive. That is impressive. I think hitting a hole in one in general is impressive, Mike. That might be one of the hardest feats to accomplish in all the sports. I read once it's like a one in 12,500 chance or yeah. something to that degree. And he got two in two days, it's amazing. It is. And Gould, he'll rip one up the middle. So Menard will get held up at third base. Nice knock there by Aisha Gould. Nice knock there by Aisha Gould. Try to toy with the pitcher a little bit there. Yeah. He'll get back to first. Gould continuing his hot hitting in the ninth spot. Sure is. It's yeah. always good to have some good hitting down towards the bottom of the lineup, Mike. It really is. He gets on base quite fre frequently and able to t get to the top of the lineup with him on base is a great thing. 
Yes, and like you said, Mike, a very, very excellent crowd today from both the Linden Vikings and the Hazen Wildcats. The Great. Vikings, only about, you know, half hour or so from here, they brought a nice crowd. Ooh. And Gould is safe at second base. Oof, Mike, wow. that would have been close if the wow. second baseman held onto the ball. He was probably out. He, I agree with that. Very fortunate. That was a nice throw down there by the catcher. It was, but fortunately now the Wildcats have two runners in scoring position with only one out. As Davis in the leadoff hitter, I believe he struck out his first at bat, right, Mike? Oh, he actually had a good single. Oh, no, he did. Up That's the right. Middle, yeah. Yep. So hoping for another one to Tyson, not if you're rewatching this, I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> about that. Um, yes, as it's a one and one count now to Davison. Looking for another one here, Mike. That might score two. Steen now winds and fires. And speak of it, Mike, well, only one's going to come in here as Gould tripped a little bit there going to third base. And that's an RBI single for Davison, and your Wildcats are now up two to one. And that... No, that was about in the same place he hit the last one. It was. That's just an excellent piece of hitting there by Tyson Davison. As Tyler Rivard stands in. And Rivard was able to find a hole the first time through and also single to center up the middle. Yes, hopefully Rivard can find another one here. Good speed on the bases right now too. Davison dives back safe. Yeah. Hazen normally pretty aggressive to go in these first and third situations, but by the move of Steer at first, uh, Steen. Steen pitching, they may be a little bit more hesitant to run right away. I agree, and it seems like their catcher behind the plate has a good arm as well. So Steen now back on the slab. He'll wind and fire. Pulls back, Davison down, he slides into second base, safe. Pretty good throw there by the catcher, but no tag was applied by the shortstop covering. Yeah, Lucia really showing a good arm down there. He is. Lucia looks excellent behind the plate. Steen now, he'll wind and fire. And Rivard. Oh, nice play there by their shortstop. Yeah, Ma Mason on that one, saving one, possibly two runs on that play. Rivard hit it on the screws, and it's a great yeah. play by their shortstop. Mason right there looking like a uh, Aussie Smith on a leaping snag there at shortstop. I mean, that was huge. It saved really two runs on that play. It did. For those of you that don't know Aussie Smith, Hall of Fame shortstop, longtime Cardinal back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, and there's a nice oh, little could be poker trouble. up could. through the middle. Montgomery hustles. He's safe. And that's going to be an infield hit for James Montgomery, and he'll knock in a run. Gould will score, and it's a 3-1 to one lead for this Hazen Wildcat team. Let me tell you, Mike, I knew this Hazen offense was good, but they came out swinging today, let me tell you. Really playing with some grit and, and definitely know this is a, a huge game for them. It, it certainly is. Let me tell you, I think losing to Thetford Monday night, maybe, you know. And I think from last season, too, I think Hazen's got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder this year. They got something to prove. Really, <laughs> really hoping to make a deep run into the playoffs. I hope so. And Montgomery on the move. He'll swipe his second bag today. I believe Montgomery's two for two, isn't he? He is. He is. And Jaden struck out his first at bat. That I do know, unfortunately. There's a ball, one and one, from Whitstein on the mound. Kind of got tagged a little bit this inning. Yes, I can't tell. How many outs are there, James? I can't Two. quite see the scoreboard. Two. Steen will wind and fire. Swing and a miss by Baker. Man, he wanted to send that one down to the Judevine Library. which for those of you that don't know, is right down the center field hill. Very famous library here in Hardwick that's been here for a long, long time. Nice eye there by Baker to lay off the nice high pitch. Steen back on the rubber now. 
Steen's going to wind and fire. And Baker goes down swinging for the second time today. But the Wildcats push across two. They lead three to one after two. I'll take a quick second to read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. We're back, folks, here at Dan Hudson Baseball Field. Let me tell you, Mike, it's just been a gorgeous day for, gorgeous night for a game of baseball. It really has. First pitch ball by Rivard. As hopefully, you know, Rivard's got a little run support now. He'd love another inning like last inning. That's high. Twisted foul ball right uh, next to us here. One and one now. Rivard back on the rubber. He'll wind and fire. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch there by Rivard. Did you coach Tyler at uh, All Stars, Mike? We had, yeah, we had him before, definitely. And solid player back then is now. Yeah, was he a pitcher? Pitcher he pitched back then. Yeah. Yep. I just didn't know if uh, pitching was a new thing since high school or if he had always pitched a little bit. Oh, he's always pitched. Oh, boy. Right on the corner. Just that missing. was good. Full count. Boy, that was a good pitch. Rivard winds and delivers. Wow. That's in there for a ball. That one almost in the exact same spot. Oh, doesn't give him that one either on the corner. As Cam Berry, the leadoff hitter, stands in now for the Linden Institute Vikings. And Cam led off the Where game with a walk. Line? Yep. He drew a walk his first at bat. So we enter the top of the third, Mike. Three to one lead for the Hazen Wildcats. Rivard now winds and fires. Inside for a ball, one and oh. Great to see, you know, the two really good fan bases here today, Mike. Really is, and speaking of Hudson Field, looks like um, Dan Hudson is here today. Very good, good to, to see him. Sure is. The Hazen Union legend, who these fields are named after. Mr. Dan Hudson. That's hit hard by Barry on the ground. Davison scoops it up, oh! Thought that that was had a double play written all yeah. over it, Mike, but yep. Tyson Davis, and that'll be an E4 at second base. Yeah, I think the, um, the extra hurriedness by Tyson trying to turn two kind of had him take his eye off the ball there for a bit, but. I think it did. That does not help Rivard on the mound as Wheeler stands in now. Wheeler, like you said, has pretty good power at the plate on top of being an excellent pitcher and catcher. All around, just really, really good baseball player. They stop by Montgomery. That's high for a ball. 2 0 oh now to Wheeler. Well, as you said, uh, Mike Montgomery, a very good athlete behind the home plate, swing and a miss. He is. He's very solid back there. He plays soccer and has played basketball at points in his high school career. So hopefully he will return next year. Nice pitch there. Two and two. You know, that's one thing I love about uh, Hazen Sports, PA Sports, mostly I think Vermont Sports too, Mike, is that a lot of athletes play three sports or at least two sports. There is. Uh, that's a 
It's great. The more they play, the better, I think. It is. That's Rivard's fifth strikeout of the day. And we actually talked about it before. We have several four-sport athletes yes. on our team um, with Tyler Rivard, Jaden Baker, and Fenton Meyer all playing soccer, basketball, baseball, and, of course, they started playing golf on the golf team. So Yeah, and all, of, all four of those ones that you just met or all four of the people that play on the golf team that play on the baseball team have turned themselves into excellent golfers. They are. They've, they've come a long ways. Have. As Duda stands in now. Whoa, for a ball. Big power bat for the Vikings. Oh, that was Ooh, nice move very there close. by Rivard. Very close play at second. I thought Rooney might have gotten him there at second base, but very quick move there by Rivard. Nice play. Here we go now. Rivard keeping him honest there at second base. High for a ball. 2-0 and now to Dudas. And swing and a miss by Dudas. <laughs> Rivard now, he'll wind and fire. That's in there for a strike. So two and two, good fight by Rivard on the mound. Way looks, to battle back. Looks like he's starting to get more calls on that inside corner than earlier in the game. It is, and Rivard likes it. He's found it a lot today. That's low for a ball, and the count runs full. So Rivard got to come up with something nasty here. Go, Luke. Base hit here, right, buddy? Base hit. Need it, Luke. Let's go. Good That's job. fouled back by Dudas. A good job by him to stay alive on a good Rivard fastball there. Very good job. Go, Luke. Fight, kids. Rivard's going to wind and fire. Hit hard on the ground, speared by Menard. He'll step on the bag at, first, at third. Throw across the diamond. Nice job there by Gould to save an error at first base. Tried to apply the quick tag and get him, but and couldn't good, quite. And good job by Menard with a good pick at third base, getting the force out, yeah, the lead nice, runner at third base. Nice sliding pick. Man, I would try and think of another Cardinals reference for Jim, but I can't think of a, <laughs> another legendary Cardinal third baseman other than maybe Nolan Arenado now. I was going to say Dale Murphy, but he played on the Twins, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think he was a third baseman either. Braves said he was not a third baseman, I don't think. And Wilshire we'll up here had the big hit for Linden in the first inning, doubling home a run. Swing and a miss there by Lusher. One ball, one strike, two outs for the Wildcats. Rivard winds and fires. All right. oh. I think they're going to say that that they're going to say that that was a foul tip. It's very unfortunate. Set of bases loaded. Rivard goes ahead in the count. He does. That was a great play by Menard, though, at third base. Really was. It was a big out. Montgomery there. Nice block behind home plate, a la Yadier Molina. <laughs> and that's roped out towards center field by Lusher. Baker coming on, and he puts it away. Can of corn out there in center field for Jaden Baker. Yeah. He had to run a long way for that one. So <laughs> headed to the bottom of the third, a 3-1 lead for your Wildcats. I'll take a second now and read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. And we're back, folks. Lyle Rooney stands in to lead it off. Against Steen on the mound. Steen is going to wind and deliver. That's low. Nice pick nice behind the home plate by Wheeler. See that nice one hop backhand? That was scoop. a good play. 
Sure looked like Mike Baker in his prime. <laughs> Steen will wind and deliver. Big swing and a miss there by Rooney, one and one. Rooney, an excellent hitter on top of being an excellent defensive shortstop. Steen will wind and fire. Rooney will foul that one back here. Headed for Hayes and Union. We thank our four seniors today. Aisha Gould, Wyatt Flanders, Jas Zendik, and Tyson Davison. Very special day for them. Sure is. That ball's hit hard by Rooney, but a pretty routine play out there at second base. So a ground out there by Lyle. Hit that well, just right at the second baseman. Sure did. As Jas Zendik stands in now. Steen now, back on the rubber. He'll wind and fire. And That's high for ball. One ball, no strikes. Jazz playing in left field today, very solid. He's played several positions he this has. year and, and done well at all of them. He was a nice addition to the Hazen Wildcat Re roster this year. Really is, and it's nice, James, to have a guy that can move around and play different spots and it sure know is. that you're going to get good, a good defensive effort wherever he is. I think a lot of these Wildcats are very versatile players. Oh, I would agree with that. And swing and a miss by Zendik. So one and two. Yeah. As you see, uh, like sometimes you'll see Rooney play third when Menard pitches, and they'll leave Rivard at short, and today he's at short when Rivard pitches. And on top of Rooney pitching as well. Right. It's nice to be able to do that as a coach. His swing and a miss there by Zendik. Nice pitch by Steen. And even, like you said, Jaden Baker will pitch sometimes. And he plays a good center field. Now Andrew the Mahler Menard will stand in for the Hazen Union Wildcats. He made an excellent defensive play. Uh, he was able to, he singled the last time and had an RBI for the Wildcats. Yep. Sure did. Be a nice hit, uh, get something going for the Wildcats. Uh, Andrew's been really swinging a good bat of late. He has. Even Mike in that game against uh, what, U32 last week. Not U32, who did? Spalding. Spalding. Spalding last week, yes. Menard swung a good bat. He was right on that pitch. And bouncing it off a Ford truck back there. Yep. Always a dangerous spot to park. It is. But it's not a lot of options here at Hazen when the parking lot fills up. Three and one now. It is really nice to look over there and see a full parking lot for a baseball game. It sure is. The You see the, uh, the parking lots like this when basketball season rolls around, I can tell you that. There in the Wildcat Den. Yes, yep. Hazen, for those of you that don't know, has, in my opinion, I think one of the best gyms in Division Three. We're really fortunate to have it. Always loved playing here. And the community is very supportive. Sure is. I wish PA could get a new gym, because Lord Mike, I'm sure you know it's needed. That's where I grew up playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're used to it. <laughs> Did they have hardwood when you were there, Mike, or was it still rubber? They actually had tile there. And Menard, pair of shoes at the plate. So through three, a three to one Wildcat lead as they go down one, two, three. I'll take a second and read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. And number 44, Miller is up. And he hit a really solid fly ball, his last at bat, but a good play by Meyer out in right field. Yes, very. Meyer made a great read and just put it away. Here we go now. Rivard now winds and fires. That is fouled back. Go 
Is that, is that Meyer or um, Flanders out there? I can't see. Flanders. Good on, good on. It's Wyatt Flanders in right field, folks. Sorry. Long ways to see out to right field. Sure is. So Fla there, two and one. So Flanders making a nice catch um, last time. It is, and I think if you see like uh, Wyatt Flanders and Fenmeyer have similar builds too, <laughs> looking from here. Yes, yep. That was in on the corner. That so, one might have tailed inside just a little. Anyways, an apology to Wyatt on that one. Yep. We're not perfect, folks. We're not perfect. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Slicing towards Flanders. And he puts it away, Wyatt Flanders, who, like you said, has played a lot of right field over the years, Mike, and he's very good out there. He is very solid defensive player. It is, you know. Good to see Aaron Hill in attendance today, Mike. That looks like all of the Hazen boys basketball coaching staff is here. Yep, Adam Gann is here as well. And you're here, so. <laughs> You very seldom even miss a game, Mike. I don't. When your kids are playing, it, it's definitely great to be there. You know, and I'm sure you go to a lot of soccer games as well. I do. I don't miss them. It's, I really appreciate being able to watch my kids play. And, and I'm sure and, getting to and, coach him. And, and, yeah, many of these kids that I've had in elementary school over the years, and it's just great to see them go out here and compete. Sure is. I say that they say that that got a piece of him at the plate. Good job, Wyatt. That was probably fortunate for Hayes, and that was kind of a no man's land, and he would have beat that out. Take your time, sure Wyatt. was. Walk it off. Celtics got a big win last night, Mike. Oh, that was great. Here you go, Wyatt. As Wyatt Mason stands in. He'll foul that one back. And that one gets to the sidewalk and oh, almost bounced up onto the roof there, Mike. You know, the toughest part about these Celtics games is the 8.30 start. Yeah. A lot of tired mornings for people around here. Sure is. Hit hard, oh. And an infield single for Wyatt Mason. That ball was hit on the screws to Rooney at shortstop. Rooney did a good job to just yeah. knock it down though. Very tough play over there. Sure was, but Rooney's as good as they come over there at shortstop. He is. And when he comes up with those, he such, has such a great arm to be able to throw guys out from deep short. He does, especially being a pitcher, too. Nice pickoff move to first base. Good job there by Gould, first base. You know, one thing you see today, Mike, that you don't always see two lefty first basemen today. Yeah, that's true. And it's often better to have a lefty first baseman. They're closer to the infield. There you go. Good eye. That is true. Asia, Asia has actually been playing that since Little League. Yep. There you go now. As Carson McQuaid stands in now. But it's the only position on the infield you can play where you can be a lefty. All That's right. a high twist and fly ball. Tyson Davison coming in. For it. Yep. Battles a win and makes a nice catch. So two outs now. Rivard trying to battle. So, a few good players early, Mike, for my player of the game contention today. Revard is certainly one of them. That Revard has been solid. Davison also. Yes, Davison, Menard. Davison drove in a run and he's two for two. Here goes, Chef. Menard, I believe, is one for two with an RBI. Nice block there by Montgomery behind home plate. Pitching the dirt in Montgomery. Very seldom it ever gets past him. Yeah, he does a great job back there. It is. Gives does. pitchers a lot of confidence to be able to throw curve balls and off speed stuff when you have a catcher back there who can it knock does. them down. That way if you bounce it, you know, you're not worried about it getting by your catcher. That's ripped. That's heading out towards the left center field gap.
That really was a good play by Baker out there to track it down. It was. Jaden Baker, that's one thing that makes him so deadly on the soccer field and on the uh, basketball court, Mike, with his speed. I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> Didn't get it from you, Mike? <laughs> Must have got it from his mom, Mike. <laughs> and Steen up to bat. The pitcher. Oh, and he'll rope one to left field. Zendik yep. back. He puts it away. That ball was hit pretty hard, but Zendik made a nice play. Zendik again showing good defensive skills out there. It is. I'll take a second and read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be back, folks. We're back, folks. You know, Mike, speaking of that, a lot of people, you know, that are in the older generation or people older than me say, "Where I'm lucky, you know, a lot of people... Until 2000, you know, never saw a Red Sox World Series championship, you know? Oh, so, and some people in their entire lives never saw one. It, it was great. I, I'm so glad, like my grandfather, who was a Red Sox fan, got an opportunity to see that. Same with me. Good job, boy. Ooh, that ball was hit pretty good there by Flanders, but it has good speed, but couldn't beat it out there at first uh, base. Good play over there by Mason. Gould stands in now. Mike, what Asia do his last time up? Asia had a um, single to center field his last time up. Yeah, that was a nice hit. It was. Ooh. Looked like a curveball there. Yeah. Nice breaking ball by Whitstein for a strike. Steen now. Back on the rubber. He'll wind and fire. Nice job. That's on the corner for a strike. So Gould quickly behind 0-2. That's outside for a ball, one and two. Yeah. Really a good 0-2 spot there, seeing if Asia would swing at the outside pitch. I have to try and think. I was going to say Gould wearing a 13. A-Rod is known for that number, but I don't really like that. So. Nice job. <laughs> good job, Blake. Yeah, I can't, I can't uh, say I'm a big A-Rod fan either. I know most Yankee fans aren't either, to be honest with you. So Davison stands in. He's two for two on the day with an RBI. Yeah, very solid senior day here for Davison. It is. He's having a whale of a game, as Lance Hall would say. <laughs> Swing and a miss there. Not entirely sure what it means, but, you know. <laughs> Steen is really starting to settle in here this inning. Looking he really that, sharp. That one kind of rocky inning, and Steen settled in and thrown the ball very well since then. That's high for a ball. One and one from Steen to Gould. <laughs> oh, there's number two, another common number. Fouled back there by Tyson Davison. Thankfully just missing a person walking in the back. Yes, thank gosh. Steen now winds and fires. That's high for a ball, two and two. Another big basketball game tonight, Mike. The Warriors play tonight, I believe, against the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, should be a good game. Should be. I wish the Mavs could have given them a little better of a series, but. High for a ball, three and two, but you can't rely on Luca to do everything all the time. Uh, I gotta say I'm a Steph Curry fan. I'm a Celtics fan, but I enjoy watching Steph Curry play. I do too. Steph Curry is one of my all-time favorite players. I just love the way he plays the game. And just a really, seems like a top, top-notch, classy guy. Sure does. 
Steen now is going to wind and fire. That's outside for a ball. Good eye by Davison to draw a walk. His OPS is a, his OBS is a thousand today on base percentage. Revert his last time up hit a really hard line drive that was caught at shortstop by Mason. He did. Real real shot and a great great play at shortstop. It was like I said, he looked like Ozzy Smith or maybe Omar Vizquel yeah, over there at shortstop. Did. It's outside for a ball. Snap throw to first base. Davison dives back safe. Omar Vizquel, it seemed like that guy played baseball for forever. He was a, what a great defensive player he was. He was. You know, Mike, he played in the majors for like 22 years, good pickoff move, and Davison's safe. And he only hit like, I think, 97 home runs in his career or something like that. Oh, wow, wow. And he played for like 21 years. Just playing good defense and just being a gritty player can get you a lot of years in the majors. Sure is. Davison on the move. He dives into second base safe. So a stolen base there for Davison. You know, I, I've been blessed, Mike, with so many great players in, in my lifetime, but I think two of some of the best hitters I've ever seen are Albert Pujols and Miguel Cabrera. They are solid. Are two of some of the best hitters that I've ever seen, and I've seen them both play in person, actually. I saw Pujols when he was on the Angels play at Fenway Park. Hit a home run over the monster. So three, three balls, no strikes now to Rivard. That's outside or high for a ball. So a walk now. Yeah. Jaden, Jaden and I were really fortunate last year to have great seats um, for a walk off win with um, Alex Verdugo hitting the walk off. Um, I think it was like second row we had near the front. It was it was awesome. We were fortunate to get those given to us, and it was. What a great experience. It's like watching a game from a spot I'm totally not used to watching it from. Yeah, right? I, uh, that was against, uh, I remember I was at a game last year too. It was a walk-off against the Cleveland Indians in uh, September. Was that the game right near Labor Day? Yes, I believe so. I think we might have been at the same game then. Yes, because actually uh, Linden at the college, they normally uh, pay for a trip every year for students to go to a Red Sox game. So I was fortunate enough to go to that. So Steen from the rubber, he'll wind and fire. Inside for a ball, 1-0. And actually, Mike, I was also fortunate enough to go to my first ever Red Sox-Yankees game last summer as well at Fenway Park. Oh, what a treat that is. Sure was. Definitely, uh, you know, not something that happens every day. Oh, that's, I'm glad you got a chance to do that. That's great. Yes. Throw down to third. Davison slides in, safe. Mike, have you ever been to a Sox-Yankees game? I did. It was... Must have been 15 years ago I was fortunate enough to go to one. and That's when both the Red Sox and Yankees were real dominant. It was, it's just a whole different experience. Intensity level goes Sure is, especially at Fenway with the crowds. Oh, it's great. Which, in my opinion, the Red Sox and Yankees the greatest rivalry in sports. I don't think it gets any better than that. Sure doesn't. And Montgomery pops one foul. Right down the third baseline. James was, has been on twice with a single to right and an infield hit. Yes, he's had a great game too at the plate. I believe he drove in a run, didn't he? Yeah, I don't have that, but I, I think you're probably right. And a swing and a miss, so two and two now. Yes, Montgomery did his first single drove in a run. One more hit, There you go, Here you go, bud. Steen now winds and fires. Montgomery hits one on the ground. Shortstop scoops it up. Good job. And throw to first gets him. Nice play by the Viking defense. After four, a three to one lead for the Hazen Wildcats. Take a second to read our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. So Cam Berry stands in now for the third time. Rebard winds and fires. That's low for a ball, and 
I'll keep saying it, Mike, because he keeps doing it. Great stop by Montgomery behind the home plate. Really is. <laughs> Barry's been on base twice today with a walk and reaching on air. There's a fly ball to center. Baker, Baker calls under for it. Puts it away. You know, Mike, as they would say, that's a can of corn <laughs> out there for Jaden Baker. Wheeler stands in now. He said big power bat. What's Wheeler done today, Mike? He struck out his last at bat, and I believe, um, well, there he is. Safe at first base, nice job by Rooney to knock that down. Another hard hit ball that was tough to stop for Rooney. Yeah, really a, really a tough play. Even if he comes up with that cleanly, it's really gonna be a hard play at first base. Sure will be, as Dudas stands in now, Dudas. That's fouled back to the fence. So I've seen Dudas, I remember, in his younger days, hit some real shots over at um, St. Jay, St. Jay at the field, Legion Field over there. Really a good hitter. Oh, the ball's down at first base. That was a nice pickoff move. I think Gould had him too. That was a nice snap throw to first. Really was. Good move over there by Revard. Another one, and that one gets by. That's out of play, so the runner will move up 90 feet. Does that count as a stolen base, Mike? I don't think it does. No, I don't think it does. On a pass I ball, I don't think I so. I think it would be going to second on the error. Yeah, I don't believe so. So the Vikings now with a runner in scoring position. Good pitch there by Rivard, just a hair inside. As Bob Euchre would say in the ma in Major League. Just a bit inside, Rivard okay. tried the corner and missed. There you go! And speaking of shots, Mike, there's one. Oh, nice catch! All right. Out in right field by Wyatt Flanders. What a great play by Flanders. Sure is, like you said, Mike. All those years of playing right field really paying off. Excellent play. I thought that that had trouble written all over yeah, it, Mike. It looked like it was going to be in that gap, but Flanders got a good jump on it and made a great play over there. Yeah, out of nowhere came Wyatt Flanders to put the glove to it. What a nice play. He's really made some good catches out there on his senior day. Absolutely has. There's another one. Baker on his horse. And Jaded oh, Baker lays out. What a catch out. by Baker. Jaded Baker. Well, Mike, I'm sure he had to get that from somewhere. Hey, that's hours of, hours of throwing fly balls to him in the yard, right? <laughs> I believe it. What a play by Jaden Baker. He flashes the leather out there at center field looking like Mike Trout. So I'll take a second to thank our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522, we support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080 and archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. We're back, folks, here at Dan Hudson Baseball Diamond. And Jaden Baker, who just ended the inning with a bang for the Wildcats, is going to stand in. He's looking to try and add to it with some offense here. And he tries to lay down a bunt and holds it down for a strike. Baker, you don't see him bunt often. No, he. but Spencer's not afraid to have guys, you know, lay him down from time to time. No, he certainly is not. Spencer, just an excellent coach for the season Wildcat team. Swing and a miss by Baker. Almost looked like kind of a half swing there. Yeah, he looks a little discombobulated down there at the plate today. He does. Baker has struggled at the plate today. Steen winds and fires. That's a ball. A ball with two strikes. Steen remains on the mound for the Vikings. He's pitched well. That's low for a ball, 2-2. Two two. 
the scorers have it wrong over there, Mike. It is not three and one. It's two and two. Oh, two and two. Be nice if it was three and one. But. Would be. And Baker fights that one foul. Nice job to protect. Two and two. It's funny the ups and downs of a baseball season. Jaden, for example, hit the ball really well this early in the year, kind of going through. Did he hit a home run, Mike? He had some triples, not a home run, but he's kind of a dry spell right now. But yeah, you'll go through that in a season. Sure will. That's a good eye. Three and two now, full count. Oops, sorry. Steen now winds and fires. Nice job by Baker there to battle back and draw the walk. It really was. He was down 0-2 and now able to reach. Now Lyle Rooney will stand in. Another, trying to think of a legendary player that wore the number six, and the first one that comes to mind is Stan the Man Musual for the St. Louis Cardinals. A lot of Cardinals talk today. Must be a fan here. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> And, and uh, cameraman Jim today being a big Cardinals fan. Sure is, so saw his Cardinals hat, so I had to pull out all the stops today. And they are very, have been a very solid franchise for they many really years. Have, I believe they're nine or 10 time world champions as a franchise, so 11. 11. <laughs> there you go, Jim corrected me on my error there. Their last World Series championship coming in 2011, where they beat the Texas Rangers in seven games. Thanks to some game six heroics by David Fries on a walk off. And Lance Berkman, yes. Man, whatever happened to David Fries, he was like really good for like two years and then didn't really do anything. Hi for a ball. Three and oh now to Rooney. Wittstein now, back on the rubber ones and fires. That's in there for a strike. No, uh, and, and nope. oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, really some good respect for Lucher's arm here. And, for sure. Uh, he's, Baker is usually stealing early in the count and with with the move from their pitcher and the arm at, at, with their catcher, it's, it's not happening right away here. No, it's not. Rooney, you can see frustrated there. I think he wanted to get a better piece of that one than he did, but he fouled it off, and now it's 3-2. and two. You know, 3-0, Mike, when uh, Rooney took there, most of the time if it's 3-0, it has to be a real, real good pitch to swing. It really does. And nice swing and a miss, and like you said, Mike, it, after that second inning, Steen has really settled in and pitched well for this it's Viking really, team. Really pitched solid. Sure has. We've had a nice uh, showing today on the mound. Really, both pitchers th throwing really well. For sure. That's a strike. The outside corner to Zendik. Steen really does a good job of combining his fastball with really solid off-speed pitches. For sure. And they throw down to second, and he is safe. So Baker in motion there. Real, really close play at second, but Jaden just getting under the tag. Sure was. You can't even see any letters on his jersey anymore. It's all covered in dirt. That's when you know you're having a good day in baseball. <laughs> like, you know, getting dirty. Love to see it. Definitely. He's going to have some grass stains on that one, too. Low, nice block there by Wheeler behind home plate. He's been excellent defensively as well for this Vikings team. Really solid. Swing and a miss by Zendik. Down he goes. So in comes Andrew Menard for the Hazen Wildcats. 
Menard hit the ball solid on his first at bat with an RBI single. First pitch from Steen is a strike. Yeah, another good off speed pitch from Steen. Sure is. Steen wins and fires. Whew. Menard took a bad hack at that one. Yeah, had him out in front. Sure is, Menard's had a nice day himself, Mike. He has. I believe he has two hits today and he's drove in a run. He's singled and struck out his last time, but it Okay, we'll see if it's trouble with the wind. And, and it is not. So after five, a 3-1 lead for the Wildcats still. Take a second to thank our sponsors today. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. We're back, folks, here at Dan Hudson Baseball Field. And speaking of the man, uh, Mike Baker has a nickname in common with uh, Stan Musial. <laughs> Mike Demand Baker. Yeah, yep, something uh, courtesy Lance, Lance came up with. Yeah, I was going to say courtesy of legendary Lance Hall, as I like to call him. Hit hard on the ground. Rooney will scoop that one up. Fires to first and got him. And Miller had hit two hard fly balls to right field that Flanders had made good catches on earlier. He sure had. He'd hit the ball hard today. He really has. A good play by Rooney on that. You know, Mike, I think legendary is a nice term for Lance Hall. <laughs> that guy has done it all. He, he's definitely, definitely had a lot of uh, good at life experiences for sure. Sure has, and he's been a, a huge, huge member of this hazing community. For a lot of years, he's commentated for HCTV. He really has. I've always enjoyed being able to go back and listen to games that my, or watch games with him commentating that my kids have played in. Same with me. Mike was uh, growing up and wanting to be a sports commentator my whole life. Mike was a big, or Lance was Lance, a big yeah. inspiration for me. Hearing him commentate for, God, it seems like 10 plus years now at HCTV. You really, it looks like Montgomery's a little shaken up, shaken up the down there. there. Hope he's okay. He's a tough kid. You see we have our trainer, Vin Ferrasi, in attendance today. I know Vinny, his, uh, I uh, got the pleasure of being the manager for his wife on the PA soccer team my senior year. Angie Ferracci, I, there's not enough words to describe how great of a coach and person that Angie is and everything that she does for the People's Academy community. And, and it's very tough being a woman coach in today's society, especially coaching a, a boys team. So, you know, I'm very glad that she was able to be the first woman to lead a boys team to a championship in the history of Vermont soccer. So that was, Awesome, and she deserves it and works hard for it. Yeah, definitely heard a lot of good things about her. Yes. So, Revard back on the set now. Try to battle back here. That'll be low in the dirt. Good stop by Montgomery. Doesn't seem to be shaking up too bad, fortunately. And a good way to start this at bat for Revard. Yep, McQuaid stands in now. Nice first pitch strike by Revard. Revard back on the rubber, he'll wind and fire. Nice pitch there for a strike. You know, Mike, Revard had probably one of the better seasons you've seen in a long, I've seen in a long time in basketball. He did have a solid season, scored well and Excellent. rebounded well and Flanders out. And Davison in. in. There was a uh, collision out there. But I believe Davison made the catch. Did a good job holding on. He did. Now we have Wyatt Flanders who's down out in the right field. Certainly hope he's all right. I always hate to see collisions like that. As the entire Hazen team is making their way out there. Same with Trainer. 
Vin Ferrasi and head coach Spencer Howard. It's good to see Flanders up. Sure is, he's played a great right field today and has for a long time. What a great, great player he is and a great kid too. Oh, he's awesome. I've heard from the guy, he's a great hunter, very successful hunter. Yep. You said Jaden's big into that, right, Mike? He or is. is the he, other one that's he is. Now Jay's into it. Likes to likes to hunt. You said Isaiah not so much. Isaiah not so much. But it's great when you have kids. You know they have different, different interests and exactly. Like even my mom will tell you, uh, Mike. My brother and I are two completely different people. Keeps it interesting for parents and. Job, sure does. <laughs> Revard winds and fires now. Swing and a miss. By Chevy Bandy. That's, that's a very unique name, Mike. It Chevy is. Bandy. It is, and he had a double his last time at bat. He did. He hit the ball hard. One ball, one strike, two outs for the Wildcat defense here in the top of the sixth. 3 1 lead for the Wildcats. That's a high twist and fly ball. Reverd will call that. And he puts it away. So that'll retire the side. Another good inning for Reverd there. Very. So we'll head to the bottom of the inning, but I'll take a second to read our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We will be right back. So folks, a new pitcher on the mound for the Linden Institute Vikings. Wheeler, the catcher, is gonna go to the mound, and as Mike Baker said, he is a tough get on the mound. He is. Oh. Man, that's tough for Wyatt Flanders. Got taken <laughs> well, out of the field and gets hit with a pitch. He's taking some punishment, but I'm sure he's happy to be down on first base. I'm sure he is. As Wheeler, seems like he throws the ball very hard, too. He does, yeah, that had to hurt. I wonder who's behind the plate now. Can't see, because he has gear on. I can't uh, tell his number. Wheeler now winds and fires. It's outside for a ball. Snap, oh throw to first. Flanders is safe. Let me tell you, there has been numerous close plays over there for the Wildcats today, Mike. It really has. And I think that's Peter Wright umpiring over there from St. Johnsbury. I believe it is. Longtime baseball coach over there earlier in his career. Sure was. Oh, and they got him at first base. A nice pickoff move there by Wheeler. Oh, that's tough with, you know, Hazen needing every bit base runner as they can at this point in the game. But another, yes. another pickoff for Lindenville pitchers. Yes. So Gould at the plate now. Wheeler winds and fires. That's inside for a ball. And It'll be 2-0. Aisha has hit a solid single and struck out his last at bat. Yep. inside for a ball. 3-0, and good eye by Gould at the plate. He's got 20-20 vision. Pulls back a bunt, there is a strike, 3-1, and one, as we had previously talked about Mike, taken for sure on 3-0. Yeah. Gould will foul that one away. Headed for the high school. And strike three. Nice pitch by Austin Wheeler. He's throwing gas on the mound. Uh, pitch catching the inside corner. So Tyson Davison, who has had an excellent day at the plate, will stand in. He's two for two with a walk and an RBI today. So he has pitched probably about as good a game as you could ask for on the, or played about as good a game as you could he ask for. He has been solid. That's high for a ball. Oh, 
Whew. Davison. Big cut by Davison. Swinging for Calderwood Insurance downtown. Another sponsor during basketball season, typically. Mm, yes. That's high for a ball. Two and one. Davison trying to protect here. Maybe try and, you know, get on base or get a hit here. Get something going for the Wildcats. He's been on base all three times today. Two sure singles has. and a walk. That's a strike. Not sure on the numbers of stolen base and bases Tyson has had today, but definitely a few. Yeah, and he probably has quite a ton on the season. He does. That'll get passed to the backstop. Tyson really trying to grid in a bat out here. He sure is. He's in looking for trying to get some insurance runs here going into the seventh against this really good Linden Vikings team. Absolutely. Head strike three, Wheeler has a great inning on the mound. So we head to the seventh as the Wildcats try and hang on here. Take a second to thank our sponsor, our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080. Archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. Fairfax, I believe, Mike, you would remember this better than me, but I believe in one of uh, Hazen's championship years, 08, 09, or 09, 10, I believe you played Fairfax one year for the championship, or you played them at the odd in the semis. I remember that. Yeah, I believe it was a game that went into like three or four overtimes. They've had some good basketball teams over the year, definitely. They certainly have, and actually the last two or three years they had it. I believe either last year or the year before they had a one of the top higher seeded teams in Division Three. Yeah, solid basketball program for sure many years. Excellent baseball program. Swing and a miss there. Who do you have hitting here, James? I am just about. It's to looks check like a new that. pinch a pinch hitter here. He's Zach Hale. Here Zach. Looks like a big strong hitter here. I believe he might be the new catcher. No. Uh, ah, he's a left fielder. Good start by Revard. Left All, fielder. Always yep. key to get the first out. So Revard's going to pick up strikeout number six on the day, Mike. Excellent game for Revard on the mound. Yeah, my apologies, folks. Hale is the left fielder. I just didn't know who the catcher was because I couldn't see his gear. I see his number behind his gear. Barry will watch a strike in there by Revard. Revard is still pitching strong in the second inning. I guess Lucia is still the catcher. Mike, I thought for whatever reason Wheeler was the catcher, but he's not. Good play by and Rooney nice. and good scoop by Gould. Nice play on both sides of the diamond there and I believe the Vikings are down to their final out. Mike, as the Wildcats cling to a 3-1 lead, is Revard looking to finish off the complete game and he's pitched excellent today. He's had a Lyle Rooney type performance on the mound today. Really been solid. Good hitter here to deal with for the Vikings. Sure is. Boy, that looked like it was pretty good. Sure did. Nice pitch there by Revard. That's hit hard foul over behind first. One ball, one strike, two outs. Three to one lead. Hit hard on the ground. Rooney dives and it's just past his outstretched glove. That would have been a tough play to make yeah. for Rooney anyways. So another dangerous hitter to deal with in Dudas. He has struck out, reached on a fielder's choice, and flown to right field with a good pitch by Flanders, or a good, good uh, catch by Flanders out there. 
Sure has. But as you've seen in the past, Mike, he can hit the ball very hard. Really can. Inside for a ball. Is this Hazen's last game of the season, Mike? This is, yeah, last game. Before playoffs. Boy. It's another good pitch by Rivard. Looked really good. We'll see if Tyler can battle back. That's a high twist and fly ball. Rooney coming in. And All he right. puts it away. And your Hazen Wildcats come out with a 3-1 to one victory in a great game. It was a pitcher's duel all day, Mike. So today, as well as Tyson hit today, I got to give my player of the game award to Tyler Rivard for sticking, sticking it out on the mound today. Pitched a complete game, had yeah. six strikeouts. Thank you folks so much for joining us. I'm James Salvis, Mike Baker joining me today. Thank you, Mike. Hey, thank you, James. And it was, it was a great win for... Hazen here coming back from a tough loss and probably their best win of the season against a really good team here. Sure is. We'll see you guys in the playoffs. Thank you so much. Have a good night.